Welcome to this video on creating trees in Scheme. The video is based on materials created by Professor Mark Kavatsa of the University of Greenwich and is presented by me, Andy Wicks. So let's move into some code. Here we have the code window that we've been using throughout this series. In the last video, we looked at atoms and lists. We found that lists were made up of atoms. So we saw a list like this. Here we've got a list of three atoms, the letters A, B and C. And if I press enter, I get that list. But we can make this a little more complicated. As we saw in the last video, a list can contain all sorts of different data types. And it can contain a list. So we could have something like this. Here we have a list within a list. This is two items of data. It's the atom A and the pair B and C. And these are a sublist. B and C are a sublist. If I press enter, I get a list containing two items, not three. We could have a list that contains different data types. So, for example, we could have something that looks like this. We've got a list that contains A and a sublist that contains 1.618 golden ratio and the value true. And when I press enter, we get this tree structure. This is a tree. A list that contains lists is a tree. And you might think, well, that's interesting, but so what? Well, let's suppose that we wanted it to represent the directory of a disk drive. We could have a disk drive, C, for example, and that contains some directories called Ada and Fred. And each of these directories then contains a list of files. And we could represent that by a structure like this. Here we have a C drive that contains a list called Ada, and within Ada are Olu and Zhao. These are the two files that belong to Ada and Ada belongs to the C drive. We could then look at a different directory, Fred, and Fred contains the files La, D, and Da. And when I press enter, what I get is that list within a list. We get that tree of directories. And you think, well, that's interesting. I can see how a tree of directories would be useful, but so what? Can I use it in other places? Well, yes, you can use it in any place where you need lists within lists. So, for example, a hierarchy of a company. You could use it in financial services to look at the different kinds of things and the things that make up those kinds of things and so on. And this is how data is represented in a list-based language.